Hey, how you doing? It's Friday, May 5th, 2013 at 5.20 p.m. And my name is Leslie Williams. And I'm making this particular video file uh, to inform the public the reason why I haven't uploaded videos in the last two weeks, two and a half weeks, is because I've been spending a lot of time. I've had migraines twice within those two, uh, two and a half week uh, period. Um, uh, which took me each time about three to four days to get over. Uh, and true under uh, people who have migraines, uh, the true sufferers sufferers of them understand that when they get one, that they're usually immobilized for at least three to four to five days. Uh, I've also been spending time uh, probing uh, new hiking areas. I'm hiking in San Diego while I'm saving for a mobile home, and I'm subject to two, what is known as gang stalking, which is also called organized stalking, along all my routes everywhere I go. Now I'm going to give you an example concerning what some corporations have done in the past for the longest time and uh, I'm not going to state any particular corporation's name in reference to the example but it has to do with what is known as a cost benefit analysis and so say if you got uh, say if you got an automobile company who's um, who realizes that they have a defect in one of their makes and models of cars or vans or trucks or whatever hang on a second please and as a result of having uh, come into the realization that they do have a, a, a defect, at times what they have done in the past, okay, is what they'll do is they'll do a cost-benefit analysis. And what does that mean? Well, they, they took a look. They take a look at how much uh, this defect would cost them to settle out of court in reference to the injuries or deaths that would come about as a result of the defect, or would it cost them more to recall all the cars? Ah. So what they do is they do a cost-benefit analysis ratio, okay, and just itemize and summarize the cost in reference to the benefits. And so basically what I'm trying to say is that if it's cheaper for them to settle out of court in reference to injuries or death than it would be to recall them, they'll go that route. And it's the same way when it comes to organized stalking and gang stalking expeditions in reference to the section of these expeditions when it has to do with uh, when you have like a whistleblower like me who understands exactly how they operate, who they're connected to and what they're about, and the places that they use for these criminal expeditions, okay? Like universities, public libraries, which is a government employee, uh, which is a government place, okay? And then how they will solicit businesses to uh, gang stalk a target while the target is in these businesses. And the companies that are involved in transportation, like bus services and trolley services, how their employees and how their services are used in gang stalking. So the whole goal in reference to how this is organized crime in the system that perpetrates these crimes, manages them, and protects them, what they're not going to do is leave these businesses and universities and public libraries wide open to lawsuits because they know they're the ones who criminally solicited these places to engage in these expeditions towards the target when they were there. Criminal, it's what it is is organized crime syndicates that are in the system using their, their employment descriptions to not only expedite these crimes but to also protect them. And as a result of the surveillance and tracking of a target, they know when a target is, is looking up a, like a lawyer online because cyber surveillance is a direct method of gang stalking and that can be Googled. Okay, so if they see a target like me who's looking up a lawyer online, what they'll do is that they'll either intimidate the lawyer, bribe the lawyer, collude with the lawyer. Um, to sabotage the case, or they might even send the case before a syndicated judge that they're connected to, who will throw happily throw out all the materials of discovery, which are evi which is evidence, while trying to imply that the target is crazy. Yes, go to YouTube and type in uh, Connie Marshall and gang stalking. Look what happened to her. Excuse me, please. Now the Constitution is gone, and so is the Bill of Rights. Because what these individuals don't want is these places that they solicited to engage in gang stalking towards a target like me to be sued. Because then the businesses or the universities and or the public library employees, which are government employees that they have to protect since they solicited them to aid and abet in the gang stalking, they're, not, they're never ever going to leave these people wide open to a lawsuit. Because then they could turn around and say, look, you solicited us to do this. Yeah, so if you don't protect me, I'm going to bite you. So what they're going to do is discredit targets like me, including taking me off of Social Security. I recently sent on, um, let's see, it was uh, March 6th, a, um, is it March 6th or February 6th? Anyways, I got the proof in my backpack. I sent a, 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 a file this big 
of undisputable proof that I was being gang stalked on USD, UCSD, and SDSU. And I composed a lot of this evidence on SDSU computers and at the North University San Diego Public Library. And then since cyber surveillance is a method of these expeditions, all you have to do is do the math. A lot of the compilization of this evidence was compiled in January as well, before the incident that occurred on February 1st, 2013 at SDSU. So I, I sent them all this information that undisputably proved I was a victim of this crime in San Diego, uh, along with a forbearance letter. And in and along with a personal letter, two personal letters that I wrote to them concerning uh, explaining the amount of evidence, you know, concerning what it was, uh, the places that have been involved in this gang stalking towards me, and um, and stating that I will never ever stop until these places that have been used in the gang stalking towards me, including the federal agencies that did not protect me, uh, I will never stop until they're exposed and criminally prosecuted. Now. I have contacted the Department of Education on numerous occasions, even going all the way back to 2006 and 7, concerning me being gang stalked at the at the college where these loans were were taken out at the school loans. Okay, and they were contacted numerous, numerous times. Now that I have undisputable proof, it's just undisputable, in your face, direct black and white proof that I am a victim of this crime. And some of that black and white proof was just recently forwarded to them. What they did was is they passed the football. And what do I mean by, by that? When you're in a football game and a, a quarterback passes the ball to a receiver and he's running, down the, he's running down the football field, he might pass the ball to another receiver. So what they did was they forwarded my loan, my loan uh, situation to it from what it appears a private contractor. Instead of reviewing the evidence that I sent them or replying back concerning how I wanted another forbearance until I can hire a lawyer that's uncorrupted or unapproachable, they, for, they, they sent it to and passed it off to what it appears to be a private entity that is now going to handle my loans without telling me what they thought about concerning the evidence, without uh, replying to me concerning uh, me applying for another forbearance. And they also seen, when I was um, uh, printing out the forbearance letter at SCSU, they also seen me print out a permanent disability uh, form from their website that I was planning on filling out that would have forgave the loans. So what they did was they just shared information, forwarded it to them, and basically then passed the ball off to a private entity. School loans, and you can get sent to prison for school loans, and if you don't think that gang stalking doesn't occur in psychiatric wards, jails, or prisons, think again, because it does. Okay, and you can Google that and research that to, those descriptions to see that it does, because other targets have blogged about it. So what these places are doing is doing nothing but protecting the institutions where these criminal activities have been going on. Yes, and how the school loans were directly connected to the gang stalking concerning Henry Ford Community College in Dearborn, Michigan, and U of M. And U of M is 1,000 feet physically away from HFCC, where I caught a gang stalker harassing me on video after I was blogging about it, tweeting about it, and emailing about it for help for years. And he was finally caught on January 20th, 2011. Yes, and that video is online. You can go to YouTube and type in U of M Torture. I have undisputably proven without a shadow of a doubt or reasonable doubt that gang stalking occurred towards me on SDSU campus, USD, including cyber surveillance, espionage, hacking into my email accounts, erasing evidence, intercepting emails for help, and UCSD. And I can get no help because it's organized crime in the system. These three separate universities alone, along with California State San Marcos University, I was also gang stalked at for the first and only time I'd ever been there on January 30, 2013. So you better believe that the San Diego County government and the government of California is going to protect the places that they have used to engage in these gang stalking activities, especially concerning human trafficking being directly connected to these expeditions and the technological resources that are attached to them as well. You better believe they will, because these universities generate millions and millions and hundreds of millions of dollars to the California and County of San Diego tax base. So do you honestly believe they're not going to protect their interest, let alone the San Diego Public Library employees that have been engaged in gang stalking towards me? And they've all been caught, undisputably caught, and they know it. So the only thing they're doing is keeping uncorrupted uh, uh, help from me, okay, while allowing the expedition to continue and they're going to take me off of Social Security. There's a manifesto that's online right now but that you can research by a manager of gang stalking who posted it online. He flat out stated, and you can find it by going to Google and typing in a gang stalking tech, 
everything you need to know. It's a manifesto of a manager of organized gangs talking crews. He flat out states they're connected to lawyers, doctors, judges, police officers, firefighters, and even Medicare workers. Do you honestly think that they're not going to take me off of Social Security in order to create extreme circumstances from the financial destitution so they can steer me to environments they control while the gang stalking continues in between? Hell yeah, they will. Because they know, I know, you would not believe what I know concerning the organized crime and the motivations and aspirations they're attached to when it comes to the criminal motivations they're connected to and what they're involved in. Human trafficking, sexual servitude rings, prostitution rings, land co-opting, mortgage co-opting, trust fund liquidation, identity theft. Yes, they're targeting the elderly, single women, single mothers, people on disability, minorities. And I can't get no help because what they want to do is protect the images and the businesses they, of the universities, the public libraries they've used, and the businesses they, they've used for these expeditions. I'm in San Diego, California. My name, um, my name is Leslie Williams. Go to YouTube and type in Learning Disabled Woman Brutally Assaulted on MTS Bus and research meticulously everything that is in the description of that YouTube video. Then go to Google and type in Learning Disabled Woman Exposes How MTS uh, Assault Video is Altered. Then go to YouTube and type in Learning Disabled Woman Catches Gang Stalker Admitting Sent to Harass. And then go to YouTube and type in Learning Disabled Woman Catches Another Gang Stalker Admitting Sent to Harass. That's just three itty bitty. On a scale of one to ten, that's not even a one compared to the evidence that I have. And no one's listening. And I make these videos to inform this fact. Have a nice day. Thank you.